life on the Courier Exchange without actually doing anything on the Courier Exchange for the day. Hi everybody. Right, this is just a little short video and it's a rundown um, of a day I've done without actually touching anything on the Courier Exchange. As you know from the last video, uh, I made a pathetic attempt to chronicle a full day and then completely forgot to video half of it. But I'm still hoping that a video gave you an idea of a typical day. However, like I said in the next one, the next day, which was today, which is now finished, I knew that I couldn't work long. I had a gig with my the band I'm in, uh, which, who were called The Anvilliers, if anybody's interested in looking us up on YouTube. And um, knew I had to be back because it, it was actually my turn to move the gear. We take it in turns. So I was going to have to get back early, load the gear, you know, the amps and guitars, etc. Pick up a couple of the guys and get to the venue and set up. So it meant I had to be back in plenty of time. And I hadn't got a job secured on the Courier Exchange. I didn't want to take anything that was going to go anywhere distant because we know what Friday afternoons can be like. It can be like traumatic on the major motorways sometimes. So I thought, I just really need to stay in the Northwest. So I didn't actually have a job secured on the Courier Exchange. However, the other company that uh, I'm registered with had asked me if I was busy that tomorrow and I'd said to him, look, you know, I'm not, I've not got anything booked in and I don't particularly want to work late because I need to be finished. And they actually said to me, look, if we can keep you local, we can probably keep you busy tomorrow until you're ready to finish. So I said, well, fair enough. So what they did was they gave me a job to start my day the next morning and that was at 8 eight thirty in the morning and i'm going to take you through the day that they gave me yesterday and they were pretty much true to their word so the day started 8 30 a.m at travis perkins which was uh, in lee which is the hometown of uh, a certain freddie fletcher limited however it wasn't at his house because I'm going to Travis Perkins and I was going to be picking up some lengths of steel ducting. You know, it's really light, isn't it? But it's quite long. Uh, and I was going to take it to one of their other branches. In this case, one in M26, which is Radcliffe up towards the Berry area. And then they were going to try and keep me moving from there. So what happened was I got into there just before i arrived they rang me and said look when you've done that job would you mind going back to the travis perkins again in lee and picking up for another job this time delivering to a residential address I said no no problem i mean there's obviously a minimum price that i work for they're aware of that they also know that i don't do short van rat jobs so if they give me a small van job you know it is essentially a long wheelbase rate whatever i do so obviously i was kind of thinking i'll just get occasional work off them as and when for a long wheelbase man however when i got to travis perkins got into the yard and go into the counter like you do with these places they knew that there was another job to go and the bloke said are you coming back for the other job i said yeah i'm going to deliver this to your other branch and come back he says you don't need to do that actually he said these ductings they don't take up any room at all they're only really light and the job you've got for the residential address is plasterboard plaster a couple of mixing buckets some a box of screws and a couple of lengths of timber it won't take much room in the van you can fit them both in quite easily i can sort it all out for you now and you don't have to come back so on the the company I do the other work for, they have an app. It's, it's a different app than the CX one. But essentially, just like on the CX, you put down that you've arrived. 
So I put down, I've arrived, and I put down on both jobs, because both jobs were on my app. And I put down a collected on both jobs. But I get paid separately for the both. Each job has a separate number. But I just wanted to let them know I was on for both, of doing both jobs. So I put down, I've collected it. And I headed off to the um, branch in Radcliffe. I delivered to Radcliffe, no problem. But it didn't take up a lot of space. Didn't take up a lot of time either. And then I was going to get ready to drive to... M29 Astley, just off the East Lanks, probably about 10 miles away, when they rang me and said, Aya, we've got a bit of a screamer on, can you help us out? So I said, well, I can try. We've got a job needs picking up from Berry. It's only a parcel. And I went, you know I'm in a long wheelbase van. Yeah, it's not a problem. And that you know, I'm going to run it at that rate. Yeah, that's not a problem. We just we really want it just off the premises so that we can you know show it's it's going to be getting there. Now Barry isn't far away from N26 where I uh, delivered to the first job. So they put the job through on the app. I went to the site in Berry, and it literally was one parcel. It was like it was printing plates. So it was in a like a poster size cardboard parcel um really really easy didn't take up any space in the van just slotted it in out the side and just put a bungee strap around it so i picked that up and then i proceeded to go to the house address with the stuff for travis perkins and deliver that again not a problem with delivery and then that parcel i had was going to birkenhead uh, which is on the way. You got to. You can go up the East Lanks to get to Birkenhead anyway. So I delivered that. Went to Birkenhead. Paid the two pound for the toll, which I then put on the job. They pay that for me. As long, you know, well they pay me back for it. Uh, it's on top of any, you know, of your mileage. Got to Birkenhead, and it happened to be a company that I was delivering to that that I used to deliver to regular in my previous job. So I got to see some old friends and faces. And again, whilst on the way to Birkenhead, they rang me and said, when you've done that, would you mind popping into Liverpool and doing a local job? And again, it wasn't a long wheelbase job. It was one pallet. But again, I just get minimum price for it anyway. Sure, no problem. So delivered in Birkenhead, a little bit of a chat but with them, but I couldn't stay too long because obviously uh, I needed to get to this job. Back through the tunnel, up to Speak, which is near the airport, went to this company, collected one pallet, I had a collection number, and delivered it less than half a mile away, still in Speak, to another company, basically across the dual carriageway. It was so easy. There was a slight issue when I got there in that it wasn't a heavy pallet, it was on the back of the van, strapped down, even for a short journey, because you never know. And then when I pressed the buzzer for the shutters, a young girl opened it and said, oh, I've got a little pallet for you from these. And she said, oh, all the forklift drivers have gone. So I thought, oh, well, I could take it back, I suppose. But I said, well, you know, it's not all that heavy. You know, you and me, if you want, we could lift it off. And then we can use that pump truck there to take it in. So in the end, we did. We just lifted it off between us, me and this young lady. Uh, it wasn't heavy. I bet it wasn't any more than... 60 70 kilos and then i just used the pump truck and dragged it inside the warehouse for a side for so again another job done and again the phone went we've got another job can you take a job from liverpool to trafford park yes absolutely sure i can uh, that was a long wheelbase job took me back to trafford park got there about two o'clock and then that was it. I said, I messaged him and said, look, you know, that's it for today. I need to think about getting home now. Um, so they kept to the word. They kept me busy all day. Now, the day's money worked out quite good. Again, we're not talking breaking records here, but considering the hours I worked, I picked up my first job at 8.30 and I was finished and done and dusted in Trafford Park by 2.30 in the afternoon. 
it was good. So what's that? Six hours, is it? Is that right? I think it is, isn't it? Six hours work. I did the two jobs at Travis Perkins at minimum. I did the job that went from Berry to Birkenhead, which probably works out around £70. And then I did the local job in Merseyside, less than half a mile, again, at minimum price. And then the job from Liverpool to Trafford Park, which again, works out just over minimum, really, because it's not all that far. So for the day, you're talking around £200 for the day. I didn't use anything like the fuel I would normally use to get that money. And did all right, finished quite early. There was plenty of work to for me to carry on, but I had to finish. And I didn't once touch the courier exchange. In fact, I didn't even look at the courier exchange because they kept me moving. So what I'm saying really with this little video is that you can't always rely on the courier exchange. I have earned a living off doing the courier exchange for the last three and a half months. But I think it certainly doesn't do you any harm to have another source of income. Because it will go quiet on the courier exchange. Now I'm sure this company that I'm doing the work for will go quiet as well. Um, but having two opportunities for work is better than just having just one. So I would say to people, yes, come on the Courier Exchange and yes, you will earn a living. It's a little bit quiet recently, I found. And having spoke to the Saintsman, he said, because he's obviously a lot more experienced than me, the beginning of the month tends to be a bit quieter and gets busier towards the latter end of the month. So that's not too alarming. But definitely consider having another source of income. There are other ways to earn a living out there there's you can go on the multi-drop route if you've got the bigger vans you can join the amazon thing i don't even know what it's called there's other apps there's a delivery app and there's, there's quite a few out there as well but i've not even bother with them but don't just rely i don't believe on the courier exchange have other potential sources of income now this company i've used they're based in the northwest they do have some work in the Midlands, going mainly back to the Northwest. And they did find me a job near Hall the other day. So it suits me to be on them. It wouldn't suit everybody anyway. But I will say this, they have a waiting list now of people who want to join them. And they are quite strict about who they have on. Not that I'm anything special, but they have standards that they want you to meet before they would consider you being on. For example, you have to wear appropriate clothing. And by appropriate clothing, they insist that you're wearing like polo shirts like this, cargo trousers or normal trousers. Obviously safety shoes, you wear the appropriate PPE, your van is in good, tidy condition. All the kind of things that I do anyway, but not everybody on here does that, do they? So. They insist on that. You have to have a police check because some of their clients apparently insist on it. And I've only obviously picked up for a couple of their clients. So I don't know all of them. But I believe some of the items could be quite high value. So again, you, you know, basically don't apply if you don't fit that criteria. And... I'm a bit of an old fashioned person. I think you should turn up in the right gear. I think you should be appropriate. They're really big on customer service. If you've got a funny warehouse man or a dodgy four key, they ask you to not say anything, not cause a fuss, just simply ring them, let them deal with it. Again, that's the kind of thing I do anyway. So it might not suit everybody, but I think for me, having another source of income will prove to be good. Payment is 14 days after your invoice, which is again an improvement on some of these 30 days and 45 days on the courier exchange. It works slightly different in that they produce a job sheet for you and they you they email you that. Every job you've done in the previous week is emailed to you on a Tuesday 
with a list of all the work, how much it's paying, then you have to check it. And if you agree it, that then becomes your invoice. They then reformat it with your VAT and then pay that in 14 days. So it's basically one invoice for a week's work. So I'll see how that works. Obviously, I keep a rough, I know roughly what I'm getting for these jobs. I just make sure that what I believe I'm getting will tally with that invoice that they send me. If it's different, then I'll take it up with them. And if it looks as though the goalposts have moved a bit, then I'll probably say, right, pay me what you think and I'll just see you because I won't carry on. But so far, they've kept to their word to me. So I've, I don't see any reason to doubt that the invoice will be there or thereabouts correct anyway. But I shall let you know. So that's it. Find another source of income. Don't totally round CX. Because although it's all right, it's not the be all and end all. And there is other work out there. And you're self-employed. You don't work for the CX, do you? You work for yourself and you've got to do what suits you. So bear that in mind all the time. And I will honestly say that I had hardly any dead miles on Friday. Probably less dead miles than I get on the CX. So again, that's worth bearing in mind, isn't it? Hope you all have a good week next week. I've got absolutely nothing booked in for Monday. But this company did ring me and say, hey, can you do a job for us from Rochdale to Bradford? But it was half past four on Monday morning. And although I don't mind getting up early, that particular job doesn't really suit. Because if I pick a job up at half past four and take it to Bradford, Bradford won't have woken up by then. So it's going to be a minimum price job and then probably wait for two hours to get anything else. So it's really not worth it. So you've got to think if the job's worth it for you as well. So I just said, no, thanks. But it's a bit early for me, that one. If it was half past four and it was going to Birmingham or a little bit further, I would have considered it. Anyway, that's it now. I bored, bored you and I'm certainly bored myself. I hope the week works out great for you next week. Looking forward to seeing the videos of the other YouTube guys. If you've got any questions, put them through. I'll answer them to the best of my knowledge. Please like the video and please consider subscribing to the video because all these things get the videos out further and help me catch up to that dreaded saintsman who appears to be racing ahead of me even further. You take care, everybody, and have a good time. Thank you for watching.